So I get asked a lot, how do I make my Let's Play videos, or how do I record this system or that game? So I figured why not take some time and answer all those questions with the video series. Welcome to part one of my ultimate guide to making Let's Plays. Today I'll be talking about all the equipment that you'll need, giving you examples by showing you what I use, and then I'll recommend some good beginner level products that I think would be helpful to anyone looking to create Let's Plays or video game content anywhere on the internet. With the introduction out of the way, let's begin. The first thing you should know is that Let's Playing isn't exactly a cheap hobby. You're going to have to spend some cash to get started. Today the standards on YouTube are pretty high, so opting for lower quality gear isn't really an option. You'll need a decent microphone and a high def video capture device if you want to compete with the rest. Generally speaking, if you want to record gameplay and commentary, you'll need five things. A desktop or laptop, a capture card, a microphone, recording software, and editing software. So let's quickly talk about each of those items on that list. Personal Computer Your desktop or laptop will be what your capture card plugs into. It's important to have a moderately powerful computer in order to ensure your capture card doesn't drop frames while recording. Generally speaking, anything from the last two or three years should be fine, although your mileage will vary if you use a budget PC. I would recommend building your own desktop PC if you want to get serious about video production, but that would be an entirely different guide that I might create one day if there is enough interest. Video Capture Device Moving on, the next piece of equipment is the capture card. A capture card is exactly what it sounds like. It's a device that captures whatever is being displayed on screen and sends it over to your PC to be recorded. Over the years, capture cards have grown in popularity, so you have a few different choices when it comes to brands, but most of them do the exact same thing. I'll go over the ones that I've personally used, starting with the Dazzle DVC-100. This thing is a piece of garbage. The Dazzle DVC-100 is a standard definition capture card. It records an up to 40i over S-Video and Composite. This would not be suitable for today's standards by any means. This was the capture card I first used like 6 years ago, before HD capture cards really took off. The only reason I'm showing it off is to just give an example of how far this technology has come in just a few years. This next capture card is one of my favorites. This is the Black Magic Intensity Shuttle. This baby does it all. Composite, S-Video, Component, and HDMI. It can record anything from standard def, all the way up to full HD 1080p 30fps. And because it's a pass-through USB 3.0 device, no splitters are needed, and the preview on your PC would have no delay. Overall, it's a great capture card, and I'd still use it to this day, if it could support up to 1080p 60fps. One caveat of this device is that it's designed to work with one specific USB 3.0 chipset, and if your desktop or laptop doesn't have that, it just won't work. And that brings us to my current capture card. I apologize for not being able to give you a better look at this because it's stuck to my wall, but this is the Avermedia U3 Extreme, another USB 3.0 capture card that supports all the way up to Full HD 1080p 60fps. This capture card hasn't given me any issues in the time that I've used it. My only complaint is that it's not a pass-through device, so you will need at least an HDMI splitter if you want to display on your TV and capture at the same time. Also, it really only supports HDMI inputs. You can use an adapter for component, however it's actually easier, cheaper, and more convenient just to use a component to HDMI converter box like this one, since it uses less cables in the long run. Because it's USB 3.0, much like the Black Magic, the preview window has no delay, so you could play directly through there if you so desired. Those are the capture cards that I've used over the years. However, there are a ton of other options to choose from, and I'll mention others when I get to the recommendation part of this video. For now, let's move on to the next important piece of equipment. Microphone If you want to record commentary along with your videos, you'll need a microphone, and a good one at that. Microphones come in a variety of different connections, but the three most common are as follows. 3.5mm auxiliary jack, USB, and finally, XLR. Let's talk about them in that order. 3.5mm mics are probably some of the cheapest you can find, and as a result, they never sound very good, often having a lot of background noise or just being made with low quality mic heads. There are certainly exceptions to this, but they are costly, and because the next two options are just far superior, I wouldn't recommend using a 3.5mm mic if you don't have to. As someone who has owned and used all three types of these mics over the years, I've learned that audio isn't something that can be done on the cheap. 
USB microphones are very common, and for good reason. They are simple to use and depending on the microphone you get, can provide you with really good audio quality when used correctly. I've been using a USB Blue Yeti for around 4 years now, and I've been able to tweak my audio settings here and there to produce some really great sound. In fact, I'm using it right now to record this dialogue. Overall, USB has the benefit of being super easy to set up and use, but does it have as much analog control like the next option, XLR? XLR microphones are much more complicated than USB and 3.5mm mics and often require more equipment to run, however you gain much more control over how your sound is being recorded. A basic setup for an XLR microphone would require a mic, an XLR cable, and a mixer of some sort. Depending on the mic or how serious you want to get, you can also throw in a compressor or a preamp into the mix to really get some professional sounding audio. Using the mixer, you can adjust the mids, highs, and lows, as well as the volume, all before it gets recorded, which gives you a lot more to work with if you choose to do post-processing effects on the audio. XLR is the way to go if you want the best possible sound, but because of how expensive it is, I wouldn't recommend starting with it. It's worth mentioning that your mileage will vary with any microphone. The space where you are recording matters just as much as the microphone itself. If you're recording in an area with a lot of background noise or echo, your audio will sound worse, and you may want to invest in some soundproofing material, which I'll talk about in another video. Recording software. Now that you've got your microphone and capture card, it's time to talk about recording software. For audio, it's pretty simple. Most people, myself included, use Audacity. It's a free audio recording program with a lot of great effects that you can use to clean up your audio and make it sound nicer with post-processing. However, you can really use any audio recording software that you're comfortable with. For recording from your capture card, I would recommend just using the software that's included with the device itself. Every capture card I've owned has included software that was used for recording, and all of them provide the best results, except for the Dazzle, that software was the worst. These softwares are designed to work with the product, so they give you the best control over important settings like resolution, frame rates, and bit rates. Some of these softwares may allow you to record the audio from your microphone along with the game audio, but I recommend you do not use these features. When using these features, sometimes the software will automatically adjust the volume of the game based on when you are speaking, your commentary might get out of sync, or the commentary track will be baked into the game audio track, meaning you won't be able to edit just the commentary if you need to. Overall, it's just much safer to record with an external application, and then combine these elements with editing software. Which brings us to the next section, editing software. Editing software is very much personal preference. There are a lot to choose from, but I'll go over the most common ones, Sony Vegas Pro and Adobe Premiere. Both of these softwares will do pretty much the same thing, but they both have their pros and cons. Sony Vegas has the benefit of being very easy to learn with its intuitive interface and shortcuts for very basic edits. On the downside, Sony Vegas is very unstable. It will crash a lot, for pretty much no reason whatsoever. So unless you get in the habit of saving often, you may end up losing some data. Adobe Premiere, on the other hand, is very stable. It's only ever crashed on me once in the past year or so. The biggest gripe I have with Adobe Premiere is the pretty steep learning curve compared to Sony Vegas. Simple edits do take a little bit longer in Premiere, but it does allow you to do more complicated edits than Sony Vegas would, and it can take advantage of Adobe's other softwares like After Effects and Photoshop via Adobe Dynamic Link. And these aren't the only softwares you can use, so if you find something else out there that you like and it gets the job done, then go for it. Anything that can easily make simple edits should do the trick. For the most part, Let's Plays don't require too much extensive editing, so unless you're getting crazy with it, something simple should work fine. Recommended Equipment So for people just looking to get into Let's Playing or any form of video game content creation, here is what I would recommend. For your PC or laptop, use whatever you have already, there's a good chance what you have now is good enough. For a capture card, I'm going to recommend the Elgato Game Capture HD60. This is a USB 2.0 device, meaning that it should work with just about any computer, and it also records in 60fps. It's worth noting that because it's USB 2.0, the preview window will have a bit of a delay, but the Elgato HD60 is a pass-through device, meaning that it doesn't require an HDMI splitter to play on both the TV and capture at the same time. For a microphone, I'll give you a few recommendations. You can save a few bucks and get the Blue Snowball. It's not as good as the Yeti, but for the price, it really can't be beat. And if you want to spend a little more for audio quality, I would highly recommend what I use, the Blue Yeti. After four years, mine still works great, and I think you can get some really great sound from it. 
Alternatively, you can use the Audio-Technica AT2020. This comes in both XLR and USB versions. I'd opt for the USB if you're just getting started. I don't use it personally, but a lot of my friends do, and they've had no issues getting crisp audio from it. Now, I just want to take a second and say I'm not sponsored by any of these companies or products that I mentioned in this video. It's just that either I use them myself or I genuinely think they are great products to use. I'll have links to these products on Amazon in the description down below if you'd like to check them out. Anyways, now that we've gotten a good idea of what it takes to actually make a Let's Play video, I think that's where I'm going to end this first part off. So, if you guys enjoyed this video series and want to see more, let me know in the comments down below. And if you could slap a like on this video, it would help me out tremendously. But, once again guys, my name is Matt, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.